Good morning, morning. and welcome to Our Lady Peace Parish as we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent. We extend a special welcome to any guests we have with us today. Our presider for today's liturgy is Father Dan Hoffman. Before we begin, please take a moment to silence cell phones. Please let an usher know if you require a low-gluten host or need communion brought to you. The order of Mass and today's readings can be found in the Breaking Bread hymnals in your pew. At this time, we invite those lighting the Advent wreath to please come forward. We gather together by singing number 39, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number 3, 9. We will sing verses 1, 6, and 7. Please stand.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. When King David was settled in his palace, and the Lord had given him rest from his enemies on every side, he said to Nathan the prophet, here I am living in a house of cedar while the ark of God dwells in a tent. Nathan answered the king, go do whatever you have in mind for the Lord is with you. But that night the Lord spoke to Nathan and said, go tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, should you build me a house to dwell in? It was I who took you from the pasture and from the care of the flock to be commander of my people, Israel. I have been with you wherever you went, and I have destroyed all your enemies before you, and I will make you famous like the great ones of the earth. I will fix a place for my people, Israel. I will plant them so that they may dwell in their place without further disturbance. Neither shall the wicked continue to afflict them as they did of old, since the time I first appointed judges over my people Israel. I will give you rest from all your enemies. The Lord also reveals to you that he will establish a house for you. And when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, to him who can strengthen you, according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery kept secret for long ages, but now manifested through the prophetic writings, and according to the command of the eternal God, made known to all nations to bring about the obedience of faith, to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, be glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father. And he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with the man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for her, who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. It's so nice to see families start to gather together. It's so nice to, nice to see our church start to fill up for this amazing celebration that we have before us. And we are right on the doorstep. We have the shortest fourth week of Advent we could think of um, in, a, in a church year, literally less than a 24-hour period 
So we really have to hurry up and get ready, right? No. It means we have to surrender more. We have to give it to God more. Because, you know, you don't have to raise your hand or answer out loud, but how many of you have the perfectly decorated home right now for Christmas? Good. I'm glad you don't. How many of you have everything done? All the gifts wrapped? Every present bought? Every gift given? Good. Neither do I. Not even close, actually. That's okay. How many of you are still cooking or even struggling to figure out what you're going to cook or what you're going to serve? Good. Well, I don't cook. I enjoy the cooking, but I'm grateful for it. But good. That means there's more room for God. There's more room for God in your heart and in your home because it's not about the presents, as wonderful as they are. And God forbid your turkey turns out like the National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation turkey. It's not about the turkey. It's about that empty spot over there that will soon be filled in the manger. It's about who will become present soon on this altar. It's about the word of God we just spoke. That's what it's all about. You know, one of the joys of this season, and it starts earlier and earlier and earlier every year, even sometimes before Thanksgiving now, is the marathon of Christmas movies that you start to watch on TV, right? And I love a lot of Christmas movies. You know, some on my list are, you know, the Santa Claus. Um, of course, uh, It's a Wonderful Life. I just watched that one last week. Um, I love National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. It's one of my guilty pleasures. But there's so many good ones out there. But I think every one of, and who can forget Elf? Of course, that's an amazing one. <laughs> but all of them, you know, none of them truly kind of get at the heart of it, but they all get glimpses of it. You know, the joy of Christmas that Buddy the Elf has and wants to spread to everyone else. You know, the great desire in Clark Griswold's heart to have the perfect Christmas and to make something special for his family as off as and crazy as can get, he can get sometimes. And of course, and it's a wonderful life, George Bailey, being at literally at wit's end and being reminded that Christmas isn't about money, it's not about prestige, but it's about the things that are most important, the family and friends that are gathered before you and the lives that you changed in your own life that has meaning and has value. All these beautiful truths that we receive in the Christmas season that remind us that it's not about what we give. Yes, that can be a part of it, but it's more about who we receive. Are you humble enough this Christmas to receive the greatest gift ever? Are you humble enough to admit that, yes, I don't have my act together all the time. I don't have a perfect life. I have my struggles and I have my burdens. But the answer to that is not to buy more presents. It's not to put up more Christmas lights. It's not to serve more food. But it's to lay humbly before God. To pick up a baby and hold him in your arms and to adore the beauty in his eyes and the love of his heart. That's what Christmas is about. And so today, on the fourth Sunday of Advent, we hear this beautiful gospel passage of the Annunciation where the angel Gabriel comes to Mary and says to her, Be not afraid. Be not afraid. I know. I know this is overwhelming. I know that your life is going to be turned upside down because of this. But trust me, the gifts I have to give to you is the most amazing gift that you can ever receive or want. And I will provide. I will take care of you. And so as we enter into this beautiful Christmas season, let's, yes, do our best to be generous, to be joyful. But first of all, let's remember where the source of that generosity and that joy comes from. And it comes from our God.
My brothers and sisters, let us stand with great joy in our hearts, profess the gift of our Catholic faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With great confidence in the perfect love of God our Father, we now offer to him our prayers. Our response is, Emmanuel, hear us. For the church throughout the world, may we grow in fidelity to God's will, following the example of Mary in today's gospel. We pray, Emmanuel, Emmanuel hear us. us. For leaders of nations, may all elected officials truly serve their communities and constituents with integrity and humility, rather than satisfy their own self-interests. We pray. Emmanuel, hear us. For the homeless and hungry of our society, may people of goodwill work to end their suffering and honor the human dignity of every person. We pray. Emmanuel, hear us. For the grieving and brokenhearted, may those who find the holiday season difficult to endure because of loss or isolation that they may find comfort, joy, and hope in Christ's incarnation, we pray. Emmanuel, hear us. For our parish community, may we find favor with God through our works of charity and compassion this holiday season. We pray to the Lord. Emmanuel, hear us. For Madeline Hall, Anna Jane Bologna, and Matthew Wolfe, who passed away recently, and for all our beloved dead. And for Rachel Metz, whom we remember in a special way at this Mass, we pray. Emmanuel, hear us. For the prayers we keep in the depths of our hearts. We pray. Emmanuel, hear us. We pray for the courage and the trust and faith of our Blessed Mother Mary especially as we enter into these beautiful days before us, as we ask her intercession. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. As we prepare our table, please join in singing number 705. Mary sing with joyful heart, number 705.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hand for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with his power the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Lawrence, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. As we come forward to the Lord's table, please join together in singing number 57, Christ Circle Round Us, number 57.
Let us pray. Having received the pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so we may press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Got some announcements. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. I hope nobody's been looking over there, right? Oh, you guys did pretty good. I didn't see anybody look over there. But, it was my fault. So, I told him to. You told him to look over there? Yes. Father Dan, it's not Christmas yet. Okay. Um, yes, but we do look forward to celebrating Christmas. Don't forget that if you come tonight, you can receive communion for Christmas. Today, obviously, this morning is Advent. So um, just keep that in mind. The schedule for the uh, Christmas, remember tonight, the 5 o'clock Mass, um, kind of a, a family-friendly uh, theme. Uh, our Sela, the praise band, will be um, doing prelude music from 4.15 to 5, so I encourage you to come early if you're coming for that one and get to kind of uh, hear the music to get us in that spirit. Then we have the 7.30 p.m. Mass, and then the Midnight Mass with uh, prelude music from 12.30 to midnight, excuse me, 11.30 to midnight um, with the Voice of Peace Choir. So we look forward to that. And then tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. For the, for the actual day of Christmas. Um, remember, the octave continues through January 1st, and then the Christmas season continues through January 8th, so we want to keep our decorations up, keep the music uh, going, and uh, the celebrations continuing. The parish office will be op closed all week. It'll reopen on Tuesday, January 2nd, so I thank you for your understanding with that. And don't forget the uh, Holy Hour for Peace. Just have that on your radar for next Sunday, New Year's Eve, 11 p.m. to midnight. Great way to usher in the new year and to ask God for peace in our hearts and in the world. So um, we look forward to celebrating Christmas in a few hours. Last thing, if you're able to, uh, right after Mass, we're going to set up some chairs, some extra chairs for the 5 o'clock Mass. So if you're able to just kind of check in with the uh, in back here, Anybody that can carry a few chairs uh, to help us right after Mass, we appreciate it. Father Dan will be hearing confessions right after Mass as well. Thank you. Thank you, Father Rich. All right, let's go. And uh, God bless you all. Can't wait to see you for these beautiful celebrations of Christmas. On behalf of Father Rich, please know how much we love you and can't wait to pray with you and see you. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. Bow down for the blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Let us go forth from this celebration joyfully singing number 580, Soon and very soon. Number 580. <coughs> soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. No more crying there, we are going to see the King. No more crying there, we are going to see the King. No more crying there, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. No 